Hello friends. So today we are going to do an awesome interview question that has been asked in companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, LinkedIn, Google, and bunch of more. So without any delay, let's get started. So the lead code problem we are going to do today is called merge sorted array. And you can see that this is a very well like lead code problem and also a lead code easy problem. Now we are simply given two values of two arrays called nums1 and nums2 and we are being told that these are sorted in non-decreasing or increasing order which means we already have two sorted array called nums1 and nums2 and now from the name we can uh, judge that we want to create an array that contains values from all the values that are currently present in nums1 plus all the values that are currently present in nums2 and this array also needs to be sorted that is the whole ask of this entire problem nothing nothing much uh, so first let's try to understand this with an example suppose we are given nums1 array that is, looks like 1 3 and 5 okay and we are given nums2 array that looks like 2 4 and 6 so obviously we need to create a sorted array that is going to be combination of these two arrays and we just need to make sure that this is also sorted so answer is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is going to be the sorted array that is combination of these two but for this problem just to make it like a little bit spicy a little bit tweaky they they gave us like few weird combination so what they have told us that is that we do not need to create this whole new or brand new array what we need to do is we need to combine these two values but we need to put all of these values in just nums1 array now the first question comes to our mind is that hey this nums1 only contains three elements how can we put six elements inside this nums1 array if we have to do that we will have to basically just expand the array and create a new array and do all sorts of migrate operations but the thing is what they have actually done is that in this kind of problem instead of giving us the input like this one two three uh, sorry one three five they are also given us three zeros in the trailing end of one or nums1 array and nums2 array is going to contain values like this on top of it they are also providing us two extra values so first value is called m and second value is called n and both this m and n represents is the number of values that are currently present inside this nums1 array now by looking at nums1 array we can see that there are actually six values present but for our our case we only need these three values these three are just simple placeholders that are currently present inside our array they actually don't serve any purpose so for this nums1 array this value number n would be value number three and for this nums2 array this value number n would be value number two this would say that nums1 oh sorry this would also be three so this would say that nums1 array contains three elements this would say that nums2 array contains three elements and if we see the total size of this nums1 it is a, it is able to store six values which means this stored array would actually be stored in this nums1 instead of uh, creating a separate array like this and that's it i know understanding this problem is actually more complicated than solving this problem so let's try to see how we can solve this and yes we can exactly solve the way you are thinking the way we would logically do but we are just going to use pointers in this case to solve this problem and uh, we are also going to do a couple of things here and there in like different order uh, for the ease of simplicity for our problem so what we are going to do is let's assume uh, with the same one let's say that we are given this nums1 array and this contains three three elements that is one three and five and the rest uh, elements are zeros okay so it contains let's say let's say three zeros okay and we are given this nums2 array and this contains three elements and these three elements are uh, two four and six okay and we all know what uh, the answer is going to be but what now what we need to do is at any given at this particular position the value needs to be the highest value that is currently present amongst both of these arrays and the highest value can only be present at the end of this location or at the end of this location because we are told that this are sorted values and because these are sorted values so these two are the maximum values present amongst each array so the value that goes in the last element would be the maximum value amongst these two value and then all we need to do is 
whichever value we put over here we need to take care so let's assume that we decide that we need to put value number six in this case okay so let's update value number six over here and we can say that okay because we are six putting six over here now this six is under no consideration so now we need to check for the second largest value we need to check the second value in this area this array and the very last value in this array whichever is greater we are going to put that so we are going to put value number five here and get rid of five and same way if we keep on repeating the same process we can simply fill out our array and we can put all the values in nums one now the question would come to you that hey why are we starting from the back and why are we not starting from the beginning and the only reason we are starting from the back is because we don't have to do a lot of overwrite operations because we are being told that these three values are already zero. They are not going to be part of our conclusion and we can simply up, uh, update the values rather than thinking about changing the values and then storing the temporary value. Because imagine if we have to make changes over here, imagine that uh, instead in this case, let's assume that uh, this first value is value number two and this value is value number one. And now we are trying to find the smallest value. In this case, we will have to put one over here and then we will have to store this two somewhere else. And then we will have to repeat the same pro operation for these two values and so on and so forth. So in order to make sure that we don't fall into the scenario of uh, making updates we are simply doing that and now let's see that what is going to be the actual way uh, i just explain you the method the only thing we are going to do is we are going to have three pointers uh, and the first pointer is going to be the last value that is currently present for nums1 so for this our example 1 3 5 and then 0 0 and 0 okay so our first pointer is going to live at this point and we can just name it as i now for this uh, second pointer that is going to be our uh, value of m and n okay so let's say that these are the values we have so this is where the m pointer is going to live and this is where the n pointer is going to live and this is this would be the same value that we can get get from the values m and n and now for the ith location we need to check that whichever value is greater compared to m and n and till these values reaches to the very first element so th this is going to be our loop condition we first check okay so currently n is greater because n is greater we are going to move value number six in this place and we are going to uh, move, migrate this pointer number n to come over here once again for and we are also going to migrate value number i so now i is currently present on this pointer once again we are going to repeat the same point uh, same process now 5 is greater so we are going to update the value of a pointer m we are going to add value number 5 over here and we are going to again repeat the same process so now this is our m and this is our n once again and we also update the ith pointer to come at the one location on the side on the left side and if we keep on repeating the same process eventually we would have our n1 that looks like 1 2 3 four five and six and this is going to be the answer this is a very simple problem so that's why the answer is also very simple if we see time and space complexity time complexity is going to be big o of n where n is the number of uh, total values that are present in both n1 and n2 items if we see space complexity well space complexity is going to be big o of one because apart from storing couple of pointers we are not using any additional values to solve this problem, the very first thing we are doing is initializing three pointers. Then we are running our while loop that while pointer two does not reach to the very first index of the nums one array, we are going to keep repeating the same process. So first we are going to check that whichever value is greater is going to be placed on the ith location and whichever uh, value that we picked out, we are going to reduce that pointer. Uh, at the same time, in either case, we are always going to uh, decrease the pointer of ith location. And eventually we would have all the values sorted in the nums1 array. And uh, this is the code. So let's try to run the code. Okay, seems like the solution is working. Let's submit this code. And our code runs 100% faster than all the other solutions, which is pretty good and pretty awesome. So I would be posting the solution in our GitHub repository and the link is in the description so you can check it out from there. Thank you.